So I'll just start back again. Um, I've set a little break there. So at we're at page eight. Um, four shining sovereigns. Buck Mulligan cried with delight. We'll have a glorious drunk to astonish the jury druids. Four omnipotent sovereigns. He flung up his hands and tramped down the s stone stairs, singing out of singing out of tune with a Cockney accent. A Cockney accent is um, Cockney. Cockney is a London is a part of London. I think it's the east of London. Um, Cockney accent is like an English accent, uh, London accent. Um, I just want to go back a half a page. Uh, there was a line I wasn't really sure about there, so I want to try and um, have a go at it again, so to speak. It's uh, page eight, halfway through the page. Book Mulligan's voice sang from within the tower. It came nearer up the staircase, calling again. Stephen, still trembling at his soul's cry, heard warm running sunlight. Now that's the thing that was a bit um, bamboozled, perplexed by heard warm running sunlight and in the air behind him friendly words now i think what jice is saying there is heard warm running sunlight it's book mulligan i think running uh kind of coming up the stairs and taking him out of the pain he's feeling with his mother and all that warm running sunlight is like taking him out of uh, that kind of of thinking kind of depressed um so to speak that could be a possible explanation to that line warm running sunlight um we'll move on anyways uh top page nine uh we have book mulligan um he flung up his arms and tramped he flung up his arms and tramped down the stone stairs singing out of tune with a cockney accent uh this is book mulligan i think singing Oh, won't we have a merry time drinking whiskey, beer and wine on Carnation, Carnation Day? Oh, won't we have a merry time on Carnation Day? Um, warm sunshine mirroring over the sea. The nickel shaving bowl shone, forgotten on the parapet. Why should I bring it down? I'll leave it there all day, forgotten friendship. Warm sunshine mirroring over the sea. It's beautiful writing. The nickel shaving bowl, the bowl that Buck Mulligan was shaving with. Um, the nickel shaving bowl shone. Sunlight. Forgotten. Left on the parapet wall. On the parapet. On the parapet wall. Why should I bring it down? This is Stephen D D Dallas thinking, I would say here. Or leave it there all day. Forgotten friendship. That's just... <laughs> That's great writing. Forgotten friendship. Forgotten friendship. The ball. Um, Book Mulligan obviously was all about the ball shaving. Now he's just forgotten about it. Next line. He went over to it. Yeah, this is Stephen to Dallas. Yes. He went over to it. Held it in his hands a while. Feeling its coolness. Smelling the clammy slaver of the leather in which the brush was stuck. So I carried the ball of incense, incense then at clan gowns i am another now and yet the same a servant to a servant of a servant um let me just read that a few lines again he went over to it that's stephen to dallas again um held it in his hands a while feeling its coolness smelling the clammy slaver of the leather on in which the brush was struck now he's thinking here he starts to think here. So I carried the boat of incense then at Clan Gowns. Um, he's thinking back in the past. So he carried a boat of incense then at Clan Gowns. Um, I am another now. And yet the same. Um, it could be referring to I'm another now. And yet the same. I'm a different person now but I'm still the same person. A servant to a servant of a servant. Um, we'll continue on. In the gloomy, doomed living room of the tower, Book Mulligan, Book Mulligan's gown, gowned form moved briskly about the heart to and fro, hiding and revealing its yellow glow. 
that's good fantastic writing there i have to read that again it's it's just so it's, it's so brilliant um in the gloomy doomed living room of the tower this is where book mulligan is now with hands book mulligan's gowned form moved briskly about the heart the fire to and fro hiding and revealing its yellow glow so he's blocking the fire and he's on he's not blocking it you see you see the glow and you don't see it uh, two shafts of soft daylight fell across the flagged floor from the high barbicans and at the meeting of their rays a cloud of coal smoke and fumes of fire grease floated turning here again uh, we have fabulous writing two shafts of soft daylight fell across the flagged floor now just visualize two just uh, visualize the roof um, two small holes probably or something like that two shafts of letting in two shafts of soft daylight fell across the flag floor on the on the floor from the high barbicans like the roof area and at the meeting of the rays where the two sh uh, shafts of daylight at the meeting of the rays a cloud of coal smoke from the fire and fumes of fried grease floated turning turning um Obviously, Buck Mulligan is frying the uh, the uh, rashers, bacon, and he's burning everything. Obviously, <laughs> a cloud of coal smoke and fumes of fried grease floated, turning. I mean, that's just brilliant imagery. You can visualize it very clearly. Um, a lot of things made Jace a genius writer, and that's one of the what's one of the main things. You know, as it's been said many times about Jace, you can. You can taste the tastes and you can smell the smells. And that's, this is a great example here. Uh, next line. We'll be choked, Buck Mulligan said. Haynes, open the door, will you? We'll be choked, because the room is filling up with smoke. We'll be choked, we'll be choked from the smoke. Buck Mulligan said, Haynes, open the door, will you? He said, Haynes, open the door. Next line. Stephen laid the shaving bowl on the locker. On the locker? Sorry, on the locker. Stephen did Alice lay the shaving bowl. He carried it down on the locker. A tall figure rose from the hammock where it had been sitting, went to the doorway and pulled open the inner doors. A tall figure. So this obviously is this Haynes person. A tall figure rose from the hammock. So he's si sitting in a, hammock, in a hammock where he probably obviously slept the night before. Went to the, to the doorway and pulled open the inner doors. Next line. Have you the key of ice? Asked. Have you the key of ice? Asked. Next line. The Dallas has it. Book Mulligan said. So Hans said, "Have you, have you, have you the key?" Next line. The Dallas has it. Book Mulligan said, "Janie Mac, I'm choked." Janie Mac. That's an Irish expression. Janie Mac. It doesn't really mean anything as such. It's just a very common expression in Ireland. Janie Mac. Janie Mac means ah. Oh, no, God, no, Janie Mac, I'm choked. Um, in that context, that's what it means, really. Next line. He howled without looking up from the fire. It's a book mulligan. And uh, he howled without. <laughs> he howled without looking up from the fire. Kinch. It's book mulligan is kind of shouting. Next line. It's in the lock. Stephen said, coming forward. The key is in the lock. The key scraped round harshly twice and when the heavy door had been set ajar welcome light and bright air entered it's fabulous imagery haynes stood at the doorway looking out stephen hailed his upended valise to the table and sat down to wait so stephen had sat down at the table haynes had opened the door basically buck mulligan tossed the fry onto a dish beside him I mean that you can visualize that so clear. Book Milligan tossed the dish. Uh, sorry, Book Milligan tossed the dish. Sorry, Book Milligan tossed the fry onto the dish beside him. You can just visualize him tossing it from the pan onto the dish. Um, then he carried the dish and a large teapot over to the table, set them down heavily, and sighed with relief. Um, it's just uh, uh, remarkable writing all around. Next line. <coughs> Next line. I'm melting, he said. 
Bok Mulligan is saying I'm melting his the heat and whatnot. I'm melting, he said, as the candle remarked when. <laughs> uh, more brilliant humour from Jice there. Book Mulligan is saying, I'm melting, he said. And then he says, and the candle remarked when. Um, candle melts, obviously. You know, you know nothing, basically saying, you know, really know nothing about melting compared to me. I'm a candle, I melt all the time. But hush, not a word more on that subject. Kinch, wake up. So Buck Mulligan is speaking here. But hush, not a word more on that subject. Um, Kinch, wake up. Buck Mulligan is speaking to uh, Stephen Dallas. Bread, now is bread, butter, honey, hands come in. The grub is ready. Bless us our Lord and these I guess. Where's the sugar? Oh jeez, there's no milk. I just want to read that again. Um... Not a word more on that subject. Kench, wake up, Buck Mulligan says to Kench. Wake up there, will you? You know, you're half asleep at the table, more or less. And then he's looking around the table, and he sees he's he's, he's saying as he's as, as as what he sees in the table. He sees bread, yes, bread, butter, honey, hands. And then he says, hands, come in. The grub is ready. Blessed the Lord. Um, he's saying grace before meals in the pff, just a very quick flippant way bless the lord and these they give where's the sugar you can't find the sugar oh gee there's no milk um stephen fetched the loaf and the pot of honey um actually i have to go back there now this um kinch wake up bread butter honey he's actually no book mulligan actually saying we need bread we need butter we need honey hands come in the group is ready. Bless the Lord. And these again. Where's the sugar? Oh, gee, there's no milk. So, uh, th actually, they weren't on the table. Um, now we see that Stephen, the Dallas, is fetching them. Stephen fetched the loaf and the pot of honey and the butter cooler from the locker. Buck Mulligan sat down in, in a sudden pet. Buck Mulligan sat down in a sudden pet. Not sure what he means by sudden pet there, but... Um, continue on. Next line. What sort of kip is this? He said. I told her to come after it. What sort of a what sort of a kip is this? Um, kip in Ireland means. Uh, how would I explain the word kip in that context? Kip is like oh that's that's a pure kip. It's a it's not a nice place. He's more saying what sort of a kip is this? What kind of a place are we in at all? He, uh, and that's the kind of means in that context the way he says it there. What sort of a kip is this? He says, I told her to come after it. So he's obviously referring to, I told her, um, I remember the first time reading this, I told her to come after it. Um, we n I, we the few lines previously, we know there's no milk. I told, so it has to be a milk lady. I told her to come after it. Oh yeah, here is, here is a, here is the answer right in the next line. We can drink it black, Stephen said. There's a lemon in the locker. <laughs> Um, here is a more brilliant humour from Jice, you know, um, as I said before, Jice was the most humorous writer in the, Eng in pff, you know, in the English language and in, in any ling language, I think. Um, we can drink it black, Stephen said, drink the tea black without milk. There's a lemon in the locker. There's a lemon. Now, Buck Mulligan doesn't strike me as an individual who would like lemon in his tea for some reason. We can drink it black, Stephen said. There's a lemon in the locker. Um, you can nearly visualize Jice after writing that line, probably chuckling to himself. Um, next line. Oh, damn you and your Paris feds, Book Mulligan said. I want Sandy Cove milk. Oh, damn you and your Paris feds. That's an old thing they're doing out in France. Book Mulligan said, I want Sandy Cove milk. Uh, next line. Haynes came in from the doorway and said quietly that woman that woman is coming up with the milk so he spotted the milk lady coming in the distance the next line the blessings of god on you book mulligan cried the blessing of god on you book mulligan cried jumping up from, from his chair sit down pour out the tea there the sugar is in the bag here i can't go fumbling at the damned eggs 
He hacked through <laughs> he hacked through the fry on the dish and slapped it out on three plates saying he hacked through the fry. Um, you can just visualize him hacking with a knife through the f through the fry on the pan. You know, just uh, real kind of rough. He hacked through the fry on the dish and slapped it out on three plates. You know, that's great imagery. Seeing in nomina patris et phyllis et spiritus sanctus. Um, that's the blessing in in Latin and uh, in in the, in the Catholic Church. I'm I'm sure. Uh, next line. Next line is um, Hain sat down to pour Hain sat down to pour out the tea. I'm giving you two lumps each, he said. This is Hain speaking. Two lumps of sugar. But I say but I say, Mulligan, you do make strong strong tea, don't you? <coughs> Excuse me. But I say, Mulligan, you do make strong tea, don't you? Book Mulligan hewing Thick slices from the loaf said in an old woman's wheedling voice. Now you can just visualize Buck Mulligan hewing like he's cutting the. It's obviously a plain loaf. It's, it's not. It's not a slice loaf, and he's hewing. He's he's cutting with a knife. He's like real rough hewing. Hewing is a perfect word to use there. Um, that's another thing that made Jice a genius. He always used the correct word at the correct time in the correct place with the correct shade of meaning as he as he as he said himself. Um, that's just perfect right in there. Book Mulligan hooing thick lices from the loaf said in an old in an old woman's wheedling voice. When I makes tea, I makes tea, as old Mother Grogan said, and when I makes water, I makes water. Um next line. By Jove it is tea, Hans says. By Jove it is tea. Uh, the English accent coming through there. Next line. Buck Mulligan went on hooing and wheeling. <laughs> hooing, like cutting the bread and he's wheeling. He's taking off the old lady's voice. So I do, Mrs. No, he's kind of singing this out. This Buck Mulligan singing this out. So I do, Mrs. Cattle, says she. Be God, ma'am, says Mrs. Cattle. God sinned. God sinned. You, do you don't make them in the one pot. Um. Just having a bit of fun, Buck Mulligan. Next line. He lunged towards his messmates in turn a thick slice of bread impaled on his knife. Now that's just great imagery there. He lunged, he he stuck he stuck the knife into um you know a, a into a, a slice of bread and shoved it, you know, in front of uh Stephen De Dallas and Haynes. He lunged towards his messmates in turn a thick slice of bread impaled on his knife, stuck on the knife. Next line, that's that's folk, he said very earnestly, from your book, Hens. That's folk, he said very earnestly, from your book, Hens. Five lines of text and pe ten pages of notes about the folk and the fish gods of Dundrum, printed by the Weir Sisters in the year of the big wind. Now you read two or three lines like that and you say, what is going on here? That doesn't make sense at all. So we have to go back when he takes off uh, the few lines previously, when he's when Book Mulligan says, So I do, Mrs. Cahill, says she. Be God, ma'am, says Mrs. Cahill. God sinned. God sinned you don't make them in the one pot. Now this is a line which is going to be important to explain this. Um, he lunged towards his messmates in turn a thick slice of bread impaled on a knife. Now, this is Book Mulligan speaking. That's folk... He said very earnestly, from your book, Hens, five lines of text and ten pages of notes. Um, what are you saying here to uh, Stephen? Or, um, book Morgan is saying to Hens, the two lines that he's saying. So I do, Mrs. Cal says she, be God, ma'am, says Mrs. Cal, God sinned. You don't make them in the one part. These are lines he read from a book belong to hands because he says that's folk them two lines are I, 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 was, I, I said if you uh, you know just just there that's folk they're folk from the book he said very from your book hands from your uh, the book from one of your books five lines of text and ten pages of notes about the folk and the fish gods of Dundrum 
printed by the Weir sisters in the year of the big win. So them two lines he said are about Mrs. Cahill are two lines that he basically read in a book belonging to Haynes. That's all that means. Next line. He turned to Stephen and asked in a fine puzzled voice, lifting his brows. Can you recall, brother, is Mother Grogan's tea and water pot spoken of in the me bin again, or is it in the up and the hers? <coughs> um, it's late at night here now, so it's um, <laughs> my eyesight is not very good now at the moment. So Book Mulligan is saying to Stephen and Dallas, Can you recall, brother, is Mother Grogan's tea and water pot? Remember he mentioned uh, Mother Grogan before. So Mother's Mother Grogan obviously has died. So Book Mulligan is asking Stephen and Dallas, Is Mother Grogan's tea, teapot and water pot spoken of? Spoken of. Did somebody get them? Um, is Mother Grogan's tea and water pot spoken of in the maiden one or in the upper centers? What what he's basically saying here to Stephen de Dallas is Mother Grogan's tea tea and water pot did somebody did she leave them to somebody? Are they spoken for? Um are are they still available? Could I get them? That's what he's more than saying. Uh next line. I doubt it, Stephen said gravely. Do you know? Book Mulligan said in the same tone. Your reasons, pray. Uh next line. I fancy Stephen said as he yet it did not exist in our out of the maybe Gion, Mother Grogan was, one imagines a one imagines a king's woman of Marianne. Buck Mulligan's face smiled with delight. Um I just want to keep reading these few lines and I'll go back again. Charming he said in a finical sweet voice, showing his white teeth and blinking his eyes pleasantly. Do you think she was quite charming? Um I just want to go back now and read them a few lines again. Um, can you recall, brother, is Mother Grogan's tea and water pot spoken of in the Megagon or in the upper center? I doubt it, Stephen said. Gravely, do you know, Buck Mulligan said in the same tone, your reasons pray. I fancy Stephen said as he yet, it did not exist in or out of. It did not exist in or out of the. Maybe on Mother Brogan was one imagines a king's woman of Marianne. A king's woman of Marianne. Um I'd have to get back to that I think. Book Mulligan's face smiled with delight. Charming, he said in a finical sweet voice, showing his white teeth and blinking his eyes pleasantly. Do you think she was quite charming? Then suddenly, overclouding all his features, he growled in a hoarse in a hoarse and rasping voice as he hooed again vigorously at the loaf, cutting the loaf again. For old Mary Ann, she doesn't care a damn, but hiding up her petticoats. He crammed his mouth with fry and munched and droned. He crammed his, his mouth with fry, so he's shoving food into his, into his mouth. He crammed his mouth with fry, fry, uh, that's the bacon, whatever he's he fr has fried, and munched and droned. The doorway was darkened by an entering form. Oh, that's great writing. The doorway was darkened by an entering form. Now, as you can visualize that clearly. Um, the doorway, obviously the milk lady has come to the door. The doorway was darkened by an entering form. The milk, sir, that's the lady speaking, I, I say. Come in, ma'am, Buck Mulligan said. Come in, ma'am, Mulligan said. Kinch, get the jug. Get the jug. Yes, it's the milk lady. An old woman came forward and stood by Stephen's elbow. That's, no, this is, the old, this is the old lady speaking. That's a lovely morning, sir, sh she said. Glory be to God. To whom? Book Mulligan said, glancing at her. To whom? Book Mulligan having a bit of fun. Glory, she said, glory be to God. He said, to whom? Um, Mulligan said, glancing at her. Eh, to be sure, Book Mulligan said. S next line. Stephen reached back and took the milk jug from the locker. The locker. Uh, next time, the Islanders Mulligan says, said to Haynes casually, speak frequently of the collector of prepuces. Now, Buck Mulligan has 
um, has asked uh, Haynes a question is the islanders the islanders with people live in the islands in Ireland like the Ireland Islands for example and other islands throughout Ireland the islanders but Mulligan said to Haynes casually speak frequently of the collector of prepuffs um, I don't know what that word means actually I have to look it up um, Next line. How much, sir? Asked the old woman. How much, sir? How much milk do you want? A quart, Stephen said. A quart of milk. He watched her pour. He watched her pour into the measure, and thence into the jug, rich white milk, not hers, old shrunken paps. She poured again a measure full and a telly, old and seeker. She had entered from the, from a morning world, maybe a messenger. She praised the goodness of the milk, pouring it out. Crouching by a patient cow at daybreak in the lush fields, in the lush field, a witch in her toadstool, her wrinkled fingers quick at the squirting dugs. They lower, they lower about her. They lower about her home. They know, they knew, juice silky cattle, silk of the kind, and poor old woman, names given her in old in old times, a wandering crone, lowly form of an immortal. Serving her conqueror and her gay betrayer, their common, their common cook queen, a messenger from the secret morning to serve our two and bread. Wh whether he could not tell, but scorned to beg her favour. <coughs> now I have to read that paragraph again. That sounds very confusing, but um, we'll attempt to um, try and figure it out. Now, a quart, Stephen, go back to a quart, Stephen said. He watched her. Stephen and Dallas is watching the, the milk lady. He watched her pour into the measure. So, obviously, this uh, milk lady has a measure, like a, like a pint, for example. She's a measure. She, is, she has a can of milk, obviously, that she carries, like a bucket. And she also has a measure that would measure out a pint or a quart. In this case, a quart. She would you know dunk it into the into the can and take out a quart and this is how she measures he watched her pour into the measure and then yes and then into the jug rich white milk right so sh she fills her measure or quart measure and then she fills the jug um and then uh he watched her pour into the measure and then into the jug rich white milk not hers not her milk not not <laughs> Uh, Joyce is saying here, not hers, not not the woman's milk, the cow's milk. And then he's thinking, old shrunken paps. I obviously referring to the old lady's breasts, old shrunken paps. Next, um, she poured again a measure full and a tilly, a measure full, another measure full, another quart probably, and a tilly, which would be a smaller measure, I would guess, probably maybe a, a quarter of a quart possibly could be half doesn't really matter old and secret she had entered old and secret she had entered from a morning world he's referring Stephen is Alice now is thinking about her she's she's old and secretive she she is she she had it she's entered from a morning world from outside maybe a messenger and then he's thinking she praised the goodness of the milk pouring it out she's praising the goodness of the milk cause oh, great milk whatever pouring it out and then he's thinking crouching by a he's he's thinking about the milk lady she, she crouching by a patient cow at daybreak in the lush field she, she to get this milk, she has she's crouching by a patient cow a patient cow because if he's not a patient cow he's going to run away and she won't be able to milk the cow so he has to be patient he waits there while she um milks milks the cow crouching by a patient cow at daybreak early in the lush field a witch on her toadstool uh Jaisa's humor again here of course she's like a witch on her toadstool she's sitting on a toadstool <laughs> her wrinkled fingers her wrinkled fingers um her wrinkled fingers quick at the squ at the squirting dugs so the cow's uh udder her wrinkled fingers they're uh, old but they're also could be wet so they're kind of getting more wrinkled her her wrinkled fingers quick and quick she's she's pulling at the at the cows that are quick at the 
squirting dugs and they are squirting out the milk I, I, into into a can they lower about her they lower about her whom they knew they lower about her all the, the cows know this old lady because she makes them she's been milking them for years obviously they lower about her whom they knew now um I know cows because you know my uncles and all that have farms if cows don't know you they'll run away from you and <coughs> well maybe not run away from you but they'll lower about her they, but if you know cows they'll be they'll you know they'll be very friendly to you and stay beside you they lower about her whom they knew they lower about her uh, sorry I thought my computer went off but actually didn't um, they lower about her whom they knew Jew silky cattle Jew silky cattle Jew silky cattle um, because it's the morning and they're full of Jew silk of the kind silk of the kind and poor old woman names given her in old times a wandering crone he's describing her she like a wandering crone lowly form of a mortal lowly form of an immortal serving her conqueror and her gay betrayer their common cook queen a messenger from the secret morning to serve our two embraid whether he could not tell but scorn to beg her favor he could be quoting something from a play or the few lines i'm not really sure it doesn't really matter i need more time to think about that um it's possible next line it is indeed, ma'am, Buck Mulligan said, pouring milk into their cups. So Buck Mulligan has answered a question that he asked a while back about it being a nice, lovely, that's a lovely morning, sir. Glory be to God. So he, Buck Mulligan has, has come back into the conversation. It is indeed, ma'am, Buck Mulligan said, pouring milk into their cups. Taste it, sir, she said. Taste the milk. He drank at her bidding. Next line. If we could only live on good food like that, he said to her, somewhat loudly, we wouldn't have the country full of rotten teeth and rotten guts. Living in a bog swamp, eating cheap food, and the street paved with dust, harsh dung, and consumptive spits. <laughs> uh, Jesus humor again. I have to read that again. If we could only live on good food like that, Buck Mulligan is speaking, he said to her, somewhat loudly, we wouldn't have the country full of rotten teeth and rotten guts, living in a bog swamp, eating cheap food and the streets paved with dust, harsh dung and consumptive spits. And the lady, uh, are you a medical student, sir? The old woman asked. Are you a medical student, sir? She's obviously heard in the past that he's some kind of, so now he, it's, it's possible, Book Mulligan, that's why he knows about the hospital, is it's possible now it's been revealed i think here that book mulligan is a medical student that's why he knew about the autopsies and cutting the bodies into stripes as we read previously are you a medical student sir the woman asked she obviously heard a bit of gossip that he was or something i am ma'am book mulligan answered so there it's been verified yes he is a medical student i am ma'am book mulligan answered stephen listened in score in scornful silence she bows her old head. Now this is Stephen to Dallas uh, thinking. Stephen listened in scornful silence. Now it's right here Stephen to Dallas is thinking. She bows her head to a voice that speaks to her loudly. He's thinking about the old woman. She bows her head to someone who speaks to her loudly. Her bone setter, for example. Her medicine man, for example. Me, she slights. She doesn't give me the time of day. To the vi to the vice that will shrive an isle, to the vice that will shrive an isle for the grave all there is of her. But her woman's unclean, unclean lines of men's flesh made not in God's likeness, the serpent's prey, and to the loud vice that now bids her be silent with wandering unsteady eyes. To read that now again, Stephen listened in scornful silence, and he's thinking. She bowed her head, oh so lady, she bowed her head to a voice that speaks to her loudly. Our bone setter, for example, her medicine man, me, she slice. To the voice that will shrive an isle for the grave all there is of her. 
when she dies when she's been prepared um for burial i would guess um to the vice to a shrive and isle for the grave all there is of her oh, but her mother but her women woman's unclean lines she obviously wouldn't be a very clean person he's thinking of men's flesh of men's fled flesh not sorry of men's flesh made not in god's likeness now he's thinking here of men's flesh made not in god's likeness because according to the bible women are men are made in god's image um of men's flesh <coughs> of men's i better be careful here <laughs> Of what I'm just um I'm just giving my interpretation of what I'm reading here. A men's flesh made not in a men's flesh a men's flesh made not in God's likeness because in the Bible it says that man is made in God's image. Um made not in God's likeness. And women was are are supposed to have uh, have been taken from the ribs of men. Um, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, the serpent's prey. The serpent's prey. Um, that's referring to a Adam and Eve. The serpent. The snake. Um, the woman was. Sh she ate the, uh, the apple. The serpent's prey. And to the loud voice that now bids her be silent. And to the loud voice that now bids her be silent. That book Mulligan. With, w with wondering unsteady eyes. Next line. Do you understand what he says? Stephen asked her. Do you understand what he says? Stephen asked her. So Stephen asked said to him, Do you understand what he says? Do you understand his accent or what? Um, Is it French you are talking, sir? The old woman says to Haynes. Um, now, this seems a bit confusing here because... Joyce hasn't put down here that Haynes was speaking at all. So Joyce has deliberately admitted this, obviously. So Haynes was probably talking to the woman as well. And now, um, it's, but it's not here in the book. And Stephen de Dallas has said, do you understand what he says? Um, referring to, <coughs> to Haynes' English accent. Um, so Stephen... Stephen does said, Do you understand what he says? Do you understand Haynes' English accent? And she said, Is it French you are talking, sir? The old woman said to Haynes. Haynes spoke to her again a longer speech confidently. Um next line. Irish Buck Mulligan says, Is there Gaelic on you? So Buck Mulligan's having a bit of fun, he says, No, he's speaking Irish. So Irish Buck Mulligan said, Is there Gaelic on you? He's saying to the lady, Is there Gaelic on you? Um Is there Gaelic on you? Um speak there in um that's another way of saying uh, here in ireland to say do you speak the irish language or do you speak gaelic gaelic is another way of saying do you speak irish is there gaelic on you do you speak irish ma'am uh next line i thought it was irish he said by the sound of it are you from the west sir <laughs> i thought it was irish so sh the lady is saying i thought it was irish she said by the sound of it are you from the west sir uh, the reason she says that you from the west sir is in the west of Ireland where I am from um, and the c county of Galway uh, one part of Galway actually is uh, called Connemara where the old that's all they speak is the Gaelic language and that's why she's saying are you from and also in the Ireland Islands that's all they speak is the Irish language so she says are you from the west sir and he says, I am an Englishman, Haynes answered. <laughs> I am an Englishman, Haynes answered. Next line. He's English, Buck Mulligan says, and he thinks we ought to speak Irish in Ireland. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, next line. Sure we ought to, the old woman said, and I'm ashamed I don't speak the language myself. I'm told it's a grand language by them that knows. So the old lady's saying, sure we ought to be able to speak our own language. And I'm ashamed I don't speak my own language. I'm told it's a grand language by them that knows. By them that knows. By them, by the people that know how to speak it. Next line. Grand is no name for it, said Buck Mulligan. Wonderful entirely. That's a real Irish expression. Wonderful entirely. Fill us up. Full of, fill us out some more tea, Kinch. 
you like a cup, ma'am? No, thank you, sir, the woman said, slipping the ring of the milk can on her forearm and about to go. Great writing, great imagery there again. Slipping it to the, the ring of the can, she slips it on her forearm. No, thank you, sir, the old woman said, slipping the ring of the milk can on her forearm and about to go. He answered to her, Have you your bill? We had better pay her, Mulligan, hadn't we? Have you your bill? Um, have you your bill? Bill is another way of saying here in this country and probably in other countries too. Have you your bill? Bill is uh, what, what, what uh, the amount we owe you. Have you your bill? We had better pay her, Mulligan, hadn't we? Stephen filled the three cups. Bill, sir, sh she said, halting. St stopping, this is the lady speaking. Bill, sir, she said, halting. Well, it's seven mornings a pint at two pence is seven twos is a shilling and two pence over and these three mornings a quart at four pence is three quarts is a shilling and one and two is two and two, sir. Now, the lady here is just adding up what she's on. Very simple to... Um, and that's the way I think they would add it up because they'd be talking exactly like that. So she said, Bill, sir, she said, halting. Well, it's seven mornings a pint. She gives them seven more. She gives them a pint of milk at two pence. It costs two pence is seven twos is a shilling and two pence over. And these three mornings, there's three mornings a quart. They get a quart at four pence is three quarts is a shilling. And one and two is two and two, sir. Um, that's the way they would speak. Um, uh, she's basically adding up uh, what they are. Buck Mulligan sighed, and having filled his mouth with a crust thickly buttered on both sides, buttered, um, stretched forth his legs and began to search his trouser pockets. Buck Mulligan sighed, and having filled his mouth with, with a crust thickly buttered on both sides, great imagery, stretched forth his legs under the table and, and began to search his trouser pockets. Pay up and look pleasant. This is Buck Mulligan speaking. Pay up and look pleasant. Oh no, sorry, it's uh, Hain speaking. Pay up and look pleasant, Hain said to him, smiling. Having a bit of fun. Next line. Stephen filled a third cup, a spoonful of tea, colouring faintly the thick, rich milk. It's fantastic imagery. Stephen filled a third cup, a spoonful of tea, colouring faintly the thick, rich milk. Buck Mulligan brought up a florin, which is like... um. Is kindage a florin? I don't. I'm not sure exactly how much it is, but a florin is a kind. But Mulligan brought up a florin, twisted or twisted around in his fingers. Um, you can just visualize that, and cried, "A miracle! A miracle! I found some money." Next line. He passed it it along the table towards the old woman, saying, "Ask nothing more of me, sweet. All I can give you, I give." So Book Mulligan said her. Ask nothing of me, sweet. All I can give you, I give. Very humorous. Stephen laid the coin in her uneager hand. Her uneager hand. She kind of doesn't want to take it. Next line. We we'll owe two pence, he said. So they are two pence. So she says, time enough, sir, she said, taking the coin. Time enough. Good morning, sir. She curtis, curtised and went out, followed by both by Buck Mulligan's tender chant. So Buck Mulligan is chanting, Heart of my heart, where more, more will be laid at your feet. Next line. He turned to Stephen and said, Seriously, Dedalus, I'm stony. Seriously, Dedalus. So Buck Mulligan says to Stephen Dedalus, Seriously, Dedalus, I'm stony. That's the really Irish expression here. I'm stony. It means I'm broke. I have no money. Uh, or sometimes in Ireland to say I'm stony broke. Um... I'm stony. I don't have any money left. It's an Irish expression, I think. Well, it's, it is used in Ireland. Um, I'm stony. The next, hurry out to your school kip and bring us back some money. Your school kip. So, we we have known previously Stephen Dallas is working in a school or something. Hurry out to your school kip and bring us back some money. Today the bears must drink and junk it. Ireland expects that every man this day will do his duty. Today the bears must drink and junk it. 
Ireland respect their men this day will do his his duty. Um that just something he says, it doesn't really mean anything. That reminds me, Haynes said, rising. That reminds me, Haynes said, rising, that I have to be at your national library today. Um so Haynes has spoken that next line. Our swim first, Book Mulligan said. So our swim first. So they obviously go for morning swim. He turned to Stephen and asked blandly, Is this the day for your monthly watch, w wash, Kinch? Having a bit of fun, more than saying you only wash once a month, Kinch, come on. Is this the day for your monthly wash, Kinch? Then he said to Haynes, The unclean bird makes a pint of washing once a month. So it's kind of more confirmation that the Stephen the Dennis is a bit of a poet or a writer. Because um, Book Mullen keeps referring to him as a bird. I know in a jestful way. But um, the unclean bear makes a pint of washing once a month. Next line. All Ireland is washed by the Gulf Stream, Stephen said, as he let honey trickle out. As he let honey trickle over a slice of loaf. That's great imagery there. Ireland is washed by the Gulf Stream, Stephen said, as he let honey trickle over a slice of the loaf. Haynes, from the corner where he was knotting easily a scap about the loose collar of his tennis shirt, spoke. So he's not in a scarf on his coat. Hands from the corner where he had where he was knotting easily, a scarf about the loose collar of his tenure spoke. I intend to make a collection of your sayings if you will let me. Um next line. Speaking to me speaking to me they wash and tub and scrub. Age and bite of inwit, conscious, yet here's a spot. Um not sure about that line yet, but I'm sure that we're going to be able to figure that out soon, because this happens a lot in Ulysses. Joyce just throws a line or two or three li uh, lines, or sometimes seven or eight or ten lines, just throws them on the page, and you cannot make head nor tail of them. And then you find out he explains them like a page or two later. So this seems to me like a line that is just thrown in there that. We we the Joyce will um, repeat and and give us more clues uh, probably in a page or two I'm guessing. So let's read that again. I intend to make a collection of your sayings if you will let me. Speaking to me. Now we don't know who sent this. Speaking to me, they wash, and tub and scrub, engine bite of inward conscious. Yet here's the spot. If I was to guess, I think that's Book Mulligan. Um, Thinking that, or s s not saying that, he's thinking that probably. Engine bite of inwit, conscience, yet here's the spot. Uh, it's very hard to figure that out yet, but I'm sure we will. Next line. That one about the cracked looking glass of a servant being the symbol of Irish art is art is juice good. Now that's Hayne speaking. That one about the cracked looking glass of a servant being the symbol of Irish art is juice good. That's definitely Hayne speaking. But Mulligan kicked Stevens' foot under the table and said with warmth of with warmth of tone. But Mulligan kicked Stevens' foot under the table and said with warmth of tone. Wait till you hear him on Hamlet, Haynes. Um. Wait till you hear him on Hamlet, Haynes. So wait till you hear Stephen Dell talk about Hamlet. Next line. Well, I mean it, Haynes said, still speaking to Stephen. I was just thinking of it when the when that poor old creator came in, the McLady. Um next line. Would I make money by it? Stephen asked. Haynes left and as he took his soft grey hat from the whole fast of the hammock said, I don't know, I'm sure. He strolled out to the doorway, but Mulligan bent across to Stephen and said with coarse vigour, You put your hoof in it now. What did you say that for? <laughs> that's a real Irish. That's a real Irish uh, uh, expression. There, you put your hoof in it. What did you say that for? Um, you put your hoof in it. You put your hoof in it. You put your foot in it. Um, we know you put your hoof in it. Now, what did you say for you? More than saying to Stephen, that you shouldn't have said that. You put your foot in it. It's like a anybody, or oh, you put your foot in it, or sh you sometimes you say something and you know you shouldn't have said it. So, but one of the things saying to Stephen Dallas, you put your hoof, you shouldn't have said that. 
probably you shouldn't have said what shouldn't you have said would i make money by it that's probably what um Stephen Dallas is more or less saying that it's kind of maybe ungentlemanlike, but I make money out of it. <laughs> to um, next line, well, Stephen said the problem is to get money from whom, from the milk woman or from him. It's a toss up, I think. Um, I just want to take another break now, so I'll just leave it at that. We're up to page fourteen and six pages now to go to uh up to page twenty. Um